Okay, so the first thing that I do is lay out my composition. I'm using the mask that I've created, so I've just stamped them onto copier paper and post-it notes. And then I take a pencil, and uh, once I'm happy with where I'm, I want the main images to go, and I just number them, and then um, starting from the front to the back, and then also put in a couple of pencil marks as to where the, the edges of each stamp is going to go, just so that when I take the paper away I can see. Using the Bockingford, um, the hot press uh, card, watercolour card, and I'm using VersaFine ink. Now you could use VersaClair or stays on. It's just anything that is um, a permanent ink. That's what you need to use. And then after each one, mask it off and clean your stamp off, obviously. Um, the next one I'm going to be using is the Nip and Duck. Um, this is the my favourite one out of the three, and I know that it sold out sold out really quickly. Um, and with the bigger stamps, I use the Crafts 2, sort of a flexible stamping platform. So you'll see me sort of lift up the corners. I have found that gives you the the middle part of the image stamps better. Sometimes um, you can it can miss out when you're doing the big stamps like that. Um, but it just gives an extra firm press in the centre of them, which is quite handy. Um, I couldn't resist putting in the little male duck behind him. Um, I love his little tie, it's very cute. And then the next stage is to create a soft border between the two, because um, otherwise it would look like the goat and um, the pheasant were just sort of floating. Um, so I'm using the butterfly set. Um, the two butterflies, the bonus one, and the one that comes with the pheasant, I think. Um, and to because I needed to create quite a few masks on this one, this one I use the post-it notes because you can um, stamp it once and cut out five or six in one go, which is quite handy. And I just want to, like I say, create that soft border between the the images th straight through the middle of the card, and then put the goat on the top there so she'll sort of be floating in it. Um, I also find that when you create the mask don't worry about all the swirls and and all the the little bits that you can see on not cutting out the tiny leaves and things like that because it's not it's not worth it. I go in with a, um, a fine liner permanent marker afterwards and I fill in any bits that have overlapped or um, that you can't see very well. Um, they're a bit fiddly for colouring on this kind of collage, so there's no point. I I like to um, fill it in with the black bits. So, and it also helps with the imperfections as well, filling it in. Um, so once that's the main images have done, I've gone back to the butterflies now, and then adding in some more butterflies around the edges, and then also getting some of the feathers um, from the pheasant set and also there's a couple of flowers that I've used as well um, and then there's some stars a couple of couple of stars I can't remember which one that one's on um, but that sort of um, just adds to the background as well which is quite nice you can see them on the left there and the next thing I do is use a heat gun to um, dry everything off but this also helps to release the uh, low tack tape that I've used sometimes I find it isn't as low tack as I hope it was um, and it just means you're not going to tear any of your lovely stamped images that you've got underneath. So the heat just helps release that. Watch your fingers. <laughs> I did burn my fingers a couple of times. Um, use tweezers if you're not sure or just wait a little bit. And then, um, as you can see, I'm now using the fine liner and I'm just um, doodling basically and filling in the stars and any leaves that are sticking out um, that are overlapping. If there's any imperfections, I'm just, um, you know, like bits that the stamps miss, then I'll colour that in as well. Um, and then it's on to colouring. So I'm using Inktense pencils for this and a water brush. And then all I do is I just um, use a couple of different techniques. So I'm using um, sandpaper there. So I'm drawing the pencil onto the sandpaper and then lifting it up with the water brush. Um, you'll see me later and do it straight from the pencil. It just depends if I've got one ready I'm on the side sort of thing. But I also decided to colour the butterflies almost primary colours, but using the two colours to blend together. So you can see there I'm using yellow and red, but obviously it'll give me an orange in between as well. And then you just keep going back into it to um, intensify the colour. For 
the first butterfly I decided I was going to do it all while it was still wet um, but for some of the others I coloured the whole thing yellow first left it to dry and then went back in with the red um, to shade out it will still give you um, the shades of orange and it also means that you can then brighten the yellow again I think I went back to these butterflies quite a few times to keep colouring and also did some that were yellow and blue as well so I had the nice green in between as well um, you can obviously experiment with loads of different colours that you obviously with the primary colours using the two you could obviously use the the only ones I didn't use was the blue and red to get your purple but I want wanted to stick to a mainly yellow in the background for these because I wanted the the animals to be quite a neutral colour um, and you don't see a lot of purple butterflies well I don't find anyway <laughs> I know my colours are a bit extreme but <laughs> Um, so yeah once I've gone um, gone through you can see I've waited for that middle one to dry and then added it in and kept moved the shading around a bit so I haven't always gone from the centre sometimes I've gone from the outside sometimes I've gone from the edges in um, just to sort of mix it up a little bit and then go back in again to the ones that have dried go back in with the yellow and it really does brighten it back up again um, any that you see once they've dried if, if you think they're looking a bit faded just go back in with the colour again um, and and just keep adding and adding until you're happy with the colour you've got. Okay, so moving on to the animals now. Um, so we're using a light brown, almost a beige, um, to colour in the whole of the duck except for his wing. Um, and do find that the best way to do these is to build them up gradually. So cover the whole thing in one colour, leave it to dry, and then come back to it again with the same colour the first time round um, and then keep building it up um, using slightly darker colours for it. When you're trying to keep a natural colour like that in the background um, you don't want to go in too dark and then feel you can't lighten it, at least this way you can build up the dark part of it. Um, and then for the beak and the feet I wanted the yellow and orange so that's why I've started with the base of the yellow as you can see it's quite muted at the moment but then I'll go back into it again add another coat and also once I've added the orange I will then go but once that's dry I'll add another yellow over the top of the whole thing again to brighten it again um, it's just it's things that you you learn with it although the intense pencils are very um, very in, in, intense which is the whole point in them um, you can still get a muted look and then build it up however you want it which is quite nice to have that flexibility um, so I wanted to put in a bit of blue into um, the wing there and then also make the flowers red um, I sort of kept with a theme throughout for this so all the animals are the same kind of shading and um, the accent colours are blue and red and then I've added in sort of a, a tinge of pink um, just to because um, of course it's pink ink you have to add a little bit of pink um, but again that that male duck with his tie is just so cute <laughs> um, but yeah yeah I'm using um, different reds here to to fill in the flowers but I wanted the flowers on the duck and on the goat because the goat's got uh, flowers in her hair so I use the red on there as well and um, the face of the pheasant as well. I wanted that and then to put some yellow in the centre of the flowers as well. You can see there I'm going back in with the a darker brown. Now that I've added the other colours you can sort of see where you need to add in more shading to make the the colours stand out a bit more on there. Um, I would say just keep adding until you're happy with the the final shading that you get um, you will find some of it just happens sort of naturally and you will need to tell yourself to stop when you are happy otherwise you could go overboard but of course while it's still wet you can dab it with a tissue and pull it back out again um, and I go back in right at the end with a white pen and um, lighten up some of the other parts anyway um, you can see there I'm just adding that orange to the feet like I said um, and then keep again keep, to make them really bright just keep adding the yellow on the top that the um, the main yellow that comes with the ink tents 
set is um is very bright i think it's the sun yellow yeah so it's, it's the brightest of the lot and it really does well for for adding that sharpness to it and like i said um I, you can see the the red on the the um the goat's flowers there and I also wanted the red on the peak of the pheasant's face so i um I added in the first layer of colour and it wasn't, no matter how many times I was adding to it while it was still wet, it wasn't really getting that dark so I had to keep coming back to it quite a few times um, so I thought well, I'll move on to the other sections as well, so adding in more brown shading into um, the other animals to bring them all together and then also um, finishing off the flowers and the feathers that are on the pheasant themselves, herself So for all the, the feathers that go around the edges and the additional flowers that I stamped out, I wanted them all to be the same colour. So I went in with a, a fuchsia pink and then through the centre put a red in there to link them all together. Um, and then again, as you can see, went back into that pheasant's face and tried to add more red into there to try and get it even darker. And then it's time for the background. Um, the background I sometimes find is a bit hit or miss when I pick my colours um, but I do like to pick a colour that isn't necessarily in the, in the main picture already so that it makes everything else stand out so for this one I really went something um, different it went for sort of an aquamarine blue which at first it doesn't look much different than the blue that is on the duck's back but when you add in the second layer um, it, it does make it a a lot different and you can you can definitely tell the difference what I did was I just swapped between the colors each time just randomly adding in the different colors and of course because I was using pink and blue when they blend together you got purple so it wasn't like you got a horrible mess so if you are going to go for two colors then make sure that they do blend okay you don't want to be using like an orange and a blue because it will not give you a nice background um, and you can go as dark as you like on the background depending on if you're trying to make a a day or a night scene um, I like to have a bit of a blend of the two um, as you can see I did I stamped the stars out so it was sort of a mix of everything but I do like the brightness that that um, aquamarine added to it as you can see I do move around um, sort of here and there um, with this piece mostly it's because your um, once a, a a surface is wet and you've added as much ink to it as possible you then can't keep going back to it so you move around to you've got one bit dry and then another bit and just keep moving around once one bit's dry add some more and then the next stage is um, to add a graphite pencil so these are reasonably cheap and a lot of people have got them um, you can obviously do it with a normal HB pencil as well although um, you might find it comes off you might need to seal it afterwards and then um, I'm just going around every single animal and butterfly and everything um, and then using a paper stub to blend it out. It is time consuming but it's well worth the 3D effect at the end. Um, and once you've done all of it, also gone around the edge of the, um, the picture as well with it. You can see there to add the shading on it. You can obviously blend this out with your finger as well if you wanted to but um, you do end up with blisters after a big piece like this. So. Um, a paper stub or rolled up tissue is preferable and then it's the white gel pen so um, this is where you add your your highlights now you've made everything pop up you need to add in the light sections again so that um, that all that detail work you've done will then stand out um, and also any of the leaves that you filled in black before to make sure that you could see them um, go back in and draw the veins and um, and just highlight the butterfly wings and and all the all the little eyes and highlight the feathers and draw in some extra stars for the background um, and sort of really look at where where the light spots are. I like to think of the light coming in from above on most of these, um, but I also add in like some extra dots around the stars that I did and. Um, 
and obviously you could add in um, glitter or anything like that that you wanted to afterwards as well just any embellishments you like really um, hope you enjoyed thank you mm -hmm.